The basic idea is that you know an ellipse is an oval shape. The distance from the center to the vertices, that distance we call A. And it's going to be either elongated in the vertical direction, like stretched in the vertical direction, or in the horizontal direction, okay? But the distance from the center to the vertex, the vertex vertices are going to be on that longer axis. That's called the major axis. So in this case, this is the major axis. This is the major axis over here. And the minor axis, that's going to be the narrower uh, direction. And the distance from the center to the covertex, or the minor vertex, we call that distance B. And then the distance from the center to the foci, we call that distance C. And it's all tied together with this equation, C squared equals A squared minus B squared. Okay, kind of like Pythagorean theorem, but you're subtracting. And then the general form of the equation of ellipse is this guy right here. Notice the H and the K picks up the graph and it shifts it left and right, up and down, but it has the opposite effect. So if it's X minus two, you're actually shifting right two. If it's Y plus three, you're actually shifting down three. Okay, and it always equals one. And then with these denominators, the A is always gonna be greater than B. Okay, so just FYI, these can actually switch, okay, their position. And then the last thing is talking about the eccentricity. Eccentricity just gives you an idea about how round the ellipse is or how like narrow and stretched, you know, and thin the ellipse is. And the formula for eccentricity is equal to C divided by A. So the distance to the, from the center to the focus, divided by the distance from the center to the vertex. And an easy and fun way to kind of remember this is that the eccentricity for an ellipse is in between zero and one. The closer the eccentricity gets to zero, the more the ellipse looks like a zero, so like a circle, okay, like the, like the number zero. And the closer it gets to one, the you know, more stretched and thin it is, it looks more like the number one. So you can kind of see, you know, uh, that's an easy way to kind of remember, you know, what you're dealing with when you're dealing with eccentricity. So before we get into this example, let me just mention that if you're preparing for the ACT or the SAT, uh, check out my huge ACT math review video course and my huge SAT math review video course. I go through a number of different uh, concepts together with you. We go through example problems. There's a teaching section. There's opportunities for you to practice. And if you're preparing for that test and you really want to boost your score, a lot of students have found a great benefit from that. So check out those courses. But let's go to this uh, problem now and see if we can solve it. So they're giving us the vertices are at plus or minus nine comma zero. So I always like to draw a sketch just so I can see what we're dealing with, right? So plus or minus nine, so we're going right nine. Okay, so I'll just write nine zero. So that's our vertex right there. And negative nine zero, right? So that's our other vertex over here. And the eccentricity is two thirds. Now remember, uh, eccentricity is equal to C divided by A. So you can see we have a little bit of an equation here that we can work with. The distance from the center to the vertex, this distance right here, remember, is, is our A, and you can see that A is equal to nine. So if we put nine in here, we get two thirds is equal to uh, C over nine, right? And if we multiply both sides by nine, you can see that C is going to be equal to 18 thirds, which is six. Okay, so now we know what A is, it's nine. We know what C is, it's six. We can solve for B, by using this equation right here, c squared equals a squared minus b squared. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've got c squared equals a squared minus b squared. c squared would be six squared, which is 36. a squared is nine squared, which is 81 minus b squared. And let's see, if we subtract 81, we get a negative 45 equals negative b squared, multiply both sides by negative one, and you can see that uh, b squared is 45. If we take the square root, that's gonna be around uh, less than seven, okay, so it's gonna be somewhere around here and around here, so we can kind of get an idea about the shape of our ellipse, something like this, okay, but we're really after the equation in this problem. So let's take a look. So it's centered right at the origin, so we don't have to worry about the H and the K. H and K are gonna be zero. This equation is gonna be X squared plus Y squared equals one, and you can see we're going nine to get to the vertices in the X direction, so that's gonna be nine squared is 81. And then in the y direction, we're going the square root of 45. This is our b squared value, and that's going to be 45. So that was a kind of a whirlwind tour on how to solve for uh, the equation of ellipse when you're giving the eccentricity, c over a, and the vertices. So I hope that helped you understand how to work with these a little bit better. If it was kind of confusing, definitely check out the uh, other videos that I did talking about ellipses. I'll have links for that for you. Subscribe to the channel. Check out more videos on my uh, Mario's Math Tutoring YouTube channel, and I look forward to helping you in the future videos. I'll talk to you soon.